In this video, I'm going to show you how to cut the chamfer on the main body of the screw jack. I'm going to start out showing you how to get it dialed in. I'm going to tap it in with a hammer using a dial indicator. Then I'll show you how to pick up the corner and cut the chamfer with a good predictable cut at the end. And there's going to be some housekeeping things in there like breaking the edges with the file and chamfering the top of that tapped hole. So I'm about to cut this chamfer on this piece and I need to make sure that the piece isn't wobbling too much in the chuck. Three jaw chucks aren't very good at, uh, at maintaining concentricity. They generally go out every time you uncheck them and then recheck a piece. So I've got a dial indicator set up here. I've got another camera over here that hopefully is capturing the reading. And I've got it zeroed right here. And I'm going to move it around until I find the low spot, which is right there. And then I'm going to tap it around a little bit. All right, so that split the difference right there. Let me spin this around, see if it's any better. I'm within a couple of thousandths right now. So let me find the high spot and then the low spot again. And there's the high spot. I'm going to re-zero my dial indicator. And then move it to the low spot again is right there and give it a little love tap there's my high spot and my low spot And it's not moving more than a thousandth right now, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up the rest of the way. I've, I've had it snug, but not totally tight. And just like anything else that you adjust, you want to make sure that it didn't move after you adjusted it, which, of course, it did. So let me see if I can get this to move with it totally tight here. The reason I want this running as true as possible is I'm cutting a chamfer. And if it's wobbling a lot, you're going to get that sharpened pencil effect where it cuts more on one side than the other. And I want to avoid that. Just It's not terribly critical, it's just that it's an aesthetic thing. So here's my low spot. And there we go. Looks like we're only running out maybe... Uh, five tenths tops. So I'm set up to cut this chamfer and let's take a look at it. Uh, on the print it shows it's 20 degrees from the center line which is important. If for some reason your print gives the complete angle, the included angle from that surface to that other angled surface over there, you need to cut that in half on the lathe. Uh, you're angling your compound to the half angle because it's going to cut off of this side and that side there at the same time. Um, also we know the diameter of our stock. Our diameter of the stock is one inch. And we know the diameter we're shooting for, 625. Now that's not easy to measure that surface, but for the purposes of this piece, uh, we can pick up this corner, knowing that we're at uh, one inch, and then we can move in on the diameter until we're at 0.625. So that's what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you how to pick up that edge. So what we have to do to pick up the edge is to move the tool back and forth across the corner while we slowly move in on the cross feed this way. And eventually we're going to pick up a chip and you're going to be able to see it. Uh, maybe not on camera, but in person you can see it. It'll be a little shiny spot right on the corner. At which point I'm going to go ahead and zero my digital readout and I'll actually set it as a one inch diameter and then I'll go in and um, move until I get to 0.625. Now, this is a little bit tricky because you're, you're moving both axes at the same time and it's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. It takes a little practice, but take it slowly and don't move too fast in on the cross feed. So 
Again, I'm just moving back and forth completely across the corner. And I'm slowly moving in on the cross feed until I pick up a chip, which is right there. I'm going to go ahead and zero my digital readout. If you don't have a digital readout, you can zero your dial. And then just do your math as far as uh, how far you need to move in. I'm not going to take too much off at a time since I'm sticking out a lot. I'm just going to take 25 thousandths at a time. This will take a bit. Maybe I'll do 50. Yeah, 50 is working fine. Now these are roughing cuts, so you really don't need to worry about your surface finish on these. You're going to be machining that off on the very last pass. And on the last pass, you want to try to make the, the compound movement as smooth and continuous as possible. So this is going to be my last pass. Let's get it down to 625. I'm going to take this nice and slow. Try to get as good a surface finish as I possibly can. All done. I'll do a little bit of extra cleanup here. I'm going to chamfer that hole on the inside just a little bit, the tapped hole, and I'm going to maybe clean that up with a little bit of emery cloth and break the edges with a file. Um, so that, uh, that shouldn't take too long. So I sped up the lathe a little bit for the uh, sanding portion. Uh, it just works a little better that way. Not really going for a high polish. I just had some little dingleberries on there, um, and I uh, just figured I'd I'd sand them off a little bit. So that's this part of the machinist jack done. Uh, the next thing I'm going to tackle is going to be the little extensions. Uh, those are going to be used to uh, put the jack at different heights. If you have a, a taller part, for instance, or need to get someplace, because you've only got an inch of travel on the screw. Um, so that's going to be in the next video. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.